Hey there, I'm Melanie and I'm your design journey art class expert for watercolor pencils and colored pencils. I used to love art as a kid and I used to do nothing else but draw. I was the kind of kid that would sit in the corner and draw all day long and lose track of time. But later on when I went to school I kind of lost that passion because art was suddenly all about achievement, it was about the end result and then a few years later I decided that that's not how I want to approach art. Art should be about having fun, about enjoying the process, because why else do it? Because art is not something you have to do, it's just something you can do. So enjoy the process and that's why I'm doing my YouTube channel and my courses, because I want to inspire others to just create something and enjoy the process. I do lots of tutorials and painting ideas videos on my YouTube channel, Visual Mind. Our topic is watercolor pencils and colored pencils. We will talk about colors, blending, mixing and different techniques. And I will show you how to create very simple as well as a bit more sophisticated pieces. So in this session we're obviously going to need watercolor pencils. I'm using this Stetla 24 pack of watercolor pencils. I really love the color selection here. Then you're also going to need brushes, obviously I have this brush set and I really love the two round brushes here, they're perfect for the topic that we are going to talk about today. And I also have some tissues here just in case mistakes happen, tissues are always good to have on hand when you're using any kind of watercolor medium. And I also have a cup of water and we are going to use a compass. You can use a compass or any kind of round object to make the circles. And then I'm also using watercolor paper. You can use any kind of watercolor paper. I'm using one that has very little texture here and you can use whatever you have at home, whatever you prefer. But with watercolor pencils, I found that if it doesn't have a lot of texture, that's very good. At first, I'm gonna use this compass to create two circles. So I'm trying to find the middle, but I'm not going to measure it. So just so that it's about right. And I'm making two very small circles. Make sure that you still have space around the circles. This is going to become a little color wheel and we are going to start with the primary colors which are, um, depending on which color theory you're using, but we are going to use red, green, a blue-purple tone, as well as a yellow-orange tone. Those are going to be the first colors that we're going to use. So, here's a red tone. I'm going to draw this area. And don't worry about it being perfect or anything. I'm just filling in this area with this color now. And then I'm going to use a green tone. It's a very light green tone. And coloring in this area. Then I'm going to use a purple tone. You can see that I'm starting off with the first few colors like this so that it's just easier to spread them out. I think I'm going to use this color for the yellow ochre part. Yeah, that's the perfect color. Now I'm going to use an orange tone and also mixing in just a little bit of red because here we have this orangey, orange red tone. And then here we have this yellow orange tone. So I'm using very little orange here and a little bit of yellow. And I'm slowly filling in the color wheel that we have here. 
it doesn't have to be this perfect professional end piece we're just going to fill in all the colors here so that we'll learn a little bit about where they are on the color wheel and how they're going to blend depending on the kind of mixing system we have these are the primary colors red blue and yellow because you can obviously use blue and yellow to create green you can use yellow and red to create orange tones you can use red and blue to create purple tones and this is just our color wheel where we see where everything goes on there and this is just a basic little overview and now i'm going to use a brush and a little bit of water and i'm starting to blend all these colors i'm trying to use the right amount of water but here it's really not that big of a deal if it's not perfect because this is just going to be a messy fun little piece i'm just trying to add water to every single color and then let them run into each other a little bit so you can see that here so that we can really see how the colors blend into each other so i'm just blending all of those and I'm not worrying about making it perfect. I'm not even worrying about the pencil line here. I'm just filling everything in and creating this blend. It's also important that you clean your brush in between so that you don't contain the colors with all the other colors. So I'm just doing one part, then clean my brush and then coloring the next part. And I'm also using the smallest brush in the brush set. So now we have filled in our color wheel and we are waiting for that to dry. To speed up the drying process, you can use a hair dryer or a specific heating tool. I just used a hair dryer, but be careful if you use a hair dryer because a hair dryer has a lot of pressure and you don't want the paint to spread too much. So be careful, don't be too close, close with the hair dryer, but it helps a lot to speed up the process a little bit. And now that we have our little color wheel, everything is blended, we can move on to the next step, which is to turn this color wheel into a little flower. And I'm just going to use the same colors that I did for the color wheel, and I'm going to doodle some petals. I'm just doing very basic shapes now. Don't worry about it too much right now. I'm doing an outline which is a little bit darker and then making the pressure a little bit lighter and then making the middle parts a little bit lighter and not color it in fully. So this is where we are at now. So now I think that it has enough petals to be recognized as a flower and now I'm going to move on to add a few doodles in the spaces that we still have left. So I'm using the same colors as on the color wheel here as well. So that's what it looks like after I'm done with this step. I have now added all the petals and the doodles and now it's time to blend everything with water. So I'm going to use the same brush that I used earlier. It's the smallest brush in the brush set and I'm just going to blend everything. I'm going to start with the lighter colors and I'm also working myself from right to left because I'm left-handed. If you're right-handed, I recommend going in the other way, in the other direction, just because you're not going to smudge your paint as easily. 
So this is where the magic happens now, where everything comes to life. I think it looks so much cooler once you have blended everything. And this is a very good exercise to learn how to actually blend the colored pencils and how to use them in this way. Here you can see that the colors are bleeding into each other. If you don't like that, then I recommend always skipping one of the areas, but I personally don't mind. I'm just being careful that it doesn't spread too much. And if it does, I'm gonna use a dry brush. I'm gonna use my tissue here to dry out my brush. And I'm gonna use a dry brush just to get rid of the color again, just if it's too much. But I don't worry about it too much. I think that that's part of the process, that it bleeds a little bit and I really don't mind that. I'm being kind of careful with all those tiny doodles so that it's still a tiny doodle when I go over it with the brush. But it doesn't have to be per perfect. It can look a little bit messy. I'm just trying my best to blend everything and I'm doing that by just going over it with water and you will figure out the right amount of water in this session because we have those thinner lines and then the bigger paddles and obviously we're going to need less water for the thinner lines and more water for the paddles. So this is a really good exercise to actually find the right amount of water for everything and it's kind of hard to explain how much water you're going to need and you just have to hone in your own intuition when it comes to that and I think that you will really learn this with these exercises and I'm not perfect at this either. Sometimes I use a little bit too much water, sometimes it's not enough, then I just go back in and add more water. If I use too much water, I'm just trying my best to spread it around or remove it with a dry brush and just going back and forth and making the best out of it and just blending everything. So by now the paint job is done and these are already dry on the other side. Not completely dry here because we just worked on that. So I'm just gonna flip it around and now I'm just gonna add a few little finishing details to everything that we've done. I'm just gonna use the same colors that I used or in certain cases I'm gonna use a little darker tone and I'm just gonna go over the outline again and just add in a few finishing details to make it look a little bit more interesting. So here I'm using the ochre tone that we were using before and for the yellow tone I'm gonna use a darker shade. I think I'm gonna go either with an orange or a green tone because we have green here. And I'm gonna do the same thing here, just use a slightly darker tone. I just outlined all the doodles and added those veins and lines to the petals. So all I'm doing here is outlining them. So now we're done with our little flower piece. This is just a very fun and simple exercise. You can learn so much here and just keep going, just create it, and have fun and learn something along the way. We'd love to see your results. Share them on Instagram using the hashtag MyDesignJourney. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed this Design Journey art class. In this session, we painted a flower because I love to paint flowers. They can be super simple or super sophisticated. Just go outside, look for flowers and paint them.